What up, world? It's your boy Decent back with another special edition of the Culture Couch, and my guest at this time is part of the legendary. And yes, I do mean legendary hip hop group, Little Brother. But he's been striking on his own for the past few years, putting out some dope projects, and now he's back with a new project called RPM. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rapper Big Poo. Hello, guys. We, we have a paid studio yeah, audience, yeah. Too, so yeah, 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 yeah. So. <sighs> That's how, do, that's how they do. But brother, thank you for stopping by. Oh, man. man, thank you for having me, man. So the new project dropped last month, RPM. RPM. Like, is it easy for you at this point? Cause like you, you just rapping on that. It's probably been my hardest, hardest project in a while. Just trying to regain inspiration and making sure when I came back, you know, to making music that I actually put my best foot forward and not just go through the motions. And um, shout out to Focus. Dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually made sure that I wasn't just going through the motions and he gave me different challenges and um, probably he was probably the hardest on me that any producer has been on me in a while and I appreciated that because I think it's what I needed that, that extra push and it definitely shows in the project because of, it's a real seamless album I say that you could just let this play and it's not a stark contrast from the previous track but it's not something that kind of puts you to sleep after a while because right. you know how if you have a project that has a similar sound yeah, you kind of just yeah you yeah, can yeah, just yeah. like you know have it in the background it's like you're not even paying attention to it but you're able to jump you know from track to track and it's like really really cohesive but there's different energies to each track and you had some you had some pretty dope features on it you had um VA representative at Lava, Rio. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Philly representative. Oh, Philly, Philly representative. Yeah, 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 from Philly. I've been a fan of his for a while. Yeah. And we uh, mutually follow each other on Instagram and occasionally comment on each other's posts or whatever. And so, when I had that specific track, I had a few people in mind, but he was he was one of the main person I wanted. So, um, after sitting with it for about a week or so, just to make sure, I reached out to him. It's like, yo, I have, I got a, I got a joint, you know, would you mind? He was like, come on, man, send that through. And he, I sent it through and he got it done. It was back to me two days later. Yeah, and he is so underrated. Very underrated. He's cooked on so many of those clips records from back in the day and even some of the Pusha T stuff. So to hear you two rock out on Jake together is pretty, pretty dope. And you got Sean Don on the album. Yeah, man. Um, that's my brother, man. A long time um, collaborator. Yeah, he, he, he normally, um, uh, not this time, but he normally is there step by step with me for a lot of my projects since uh, Dirty Pretty Things in 2011. But um, I always, man, we just have a good chemistry, just natural chemistry. Obviously, we've been working together for forever, and I know he's going to always come with the A1, so it's no question. So, once again, produced by Focus, this project. You tend to have, I want to say, a very, very exclusive relationship with producers when you're working on projects. Like the one project you have, we work with Apollo Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, is that something that you do by design when you're working on a project where you're going, you know what? I have a specific sound in mind, so I need this specific guy, and only him and I going to ride together. Or it, it just happens that way. Nah, it, it, the crazy thing is, I, I enjoy putting together projects with multiple producers because then it's like a puzzle. I got to make pieces make sure pieces fit right i'll make sure things are consistent but the one producer project it ends up i'm fans of the producers that i'm working with so you have a focus who's done stuff with beyonce and christina aguilera and dre and the list goes on and on and then you have the paula brown who's done rise cash oc joel ortiz and on and on then you have a knot who's done buster and snoop and, you know what yeah. i'm saying so you when you get in the mix with these guys it's like you get greedy, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And what makes it what makes it like awesome is that these guys know they understand dynamic. So I'm able to achieve what I want to achieve in a full setting with that one producer because they have an understanding of the dynamic. Definitely, definitely. So when you work with these producers, do they know that they're working with rapper Big Pooh as opposed <laughs> to working with Big Brother? Because once again, Content may be in the same vein, but a lot of music that you make, you know, to to people who are familiar with Big Brother is the opposite. Little end of the, oh, Little Brother, sorry. Yeah. Little Brother, opposite end of the spectrum. You know, so is it like hard for you to kind of get people to say like, yo, this Little Brother, this is, you know. Most of the uh, producers, 
I'm allowed to actually cycle through beats and, and kind of determine my path. Mm-hmm. So they allowed me to determine my path. The focus was a little different, but he understood, like we both had an understanding going into the project that we wanted to do something different from obviously Little Brother and we wanted to do something that was an updated version of myself. Right. And so we had that understanding as we approached the project, but with everybody else is kind of, they just, you know, I go through and they allow me to dictate the direction. So that's never really been the issue. Definitely. So I remember a few years ago when you sat down with Rosenberg, you said that, you know, when it came to making your own music, a friend of yours made the suggestion that you made a specific song that necessarily wasn't tailored to the people who were familiar with Little Brother. Mm -hmm. And they said that the problem there was you gave it to your fan base. Right. So do you still face that challenge or you pretty much just you know what you learn from the mistake the first time you're pretty much just knowing your audience but also knowing that there's another audience that you're trying to get you know Um, I mean at this point in my career man I just make it make what I feel and I put it out and it's gonna reverberate with who's gonna you know gonna gonna feel it and and I just look at it once I figure out okay this is the demographic of people that like this I'll cater to them for this moment. And I, and I just approach it like that, man. I, I can't get wrapped up in the who going to like what and, oh, I got to make stuff because they want to hear this. Or they, ah, man. Yeah, and it's a different time in the industry. We don't need a lot of that. Yeah, it's a way different time. Yeah. And and I I just have so many other things going. Like when I put out music at this point, it's me going through a creative, you know, just brainstorm and I just want to get that creativity mm-hmm. out and, so I don't worry about who's who's gonna be attracted to it. Definitely, definitely. So with this new climate of music and you kind of having, I wanna say the best of both worlds now because you've been on a major, you've been independent for quite some time now. What is one of the stark contrasts outside of, you know, of course there being the budgets and, you know, mm-hmm. label being as active? Like what are some of the different nuances about the industry that has changed for you since you've stepped into it? Um, I mean, the, the, the industry has kind of went through a transition um, from when I first started to, to now. And it's the transition has been the internet. Mm-hmm. When I first started, the internet was something new. Mm-hmm. Not many people utilized it. Now the internet is the media. It's the thing. You know, it's the thing. Like, so for me, it's just been navigating that and Find, figuring out like okay now it's become more niche you know now you know you go direct to consumer uh, you can cut out the middleman but you also know that it's no filter right now. like there's no quality control there's none of that like it's survival of the fittest out here it's so the wild west pretty much the wild wild west and then some so you know it's just navigating those different turns as as you see the industry transition and you know, finding your place within the the current state of the industry. Definitely, definitely. So, the the name, you know, of Little Brother is synonymous with you know you guys saying that you're pretty much you know the younger siblings of you know Tribe Called Quest, right. you know EPMD, like you know a lot of the pioneers of hip hop. Now I feel like you guys are the bigger brothers in the right, sense, you right. know, to the to the Coles, the Kendricks, you know the chances so how does it kind of feel knowing that you know in some way shape or form you guys kind of led the charge when it came to what I would like to call mainstream conscious rap I mean it's been there before but you guys did it in a way that was a little bit different because most noted when you think conscious rap you think of you know the midwest or even the east coast to some extent but you guys came from the south and bought this bought this new energy and you kind of eradicate the stigma that southern rappers aren't lyricists right you know so how does it feel kind of being like you know elder statesman and you know being inspiration to a lot of these upcoming cats with the same sound as yours it's a weird place to be in <laughs> uh i remember ice cube uh when, when vh1 used to do the honors yeah and he didn't want to be honored and they, and they was like why would you want to be honored he's like yo because i'm not old i'm not done and, and and so it's i say that to say like that's kind of how i feel it's like you know obviously i know i pre they, you know, the guys that you named, and and I do know they were influenced in some way by what we we were able to accomplish, but it's just still it's like 
I can still compete. Yeah. Like, you know, I can still compete. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not done. I'm not retired. But, um, but nah, it's, it's, it's definitely an awesome feeling, man. Like, just to know that something that you did, just going and just doing what we did, that resonated with so many different people. And it resonated to the point of now the stars of today haven't been influenced by what we were doing. And um, I mean, that's it's, it's a feeling like no other, man. Definitely. So to kind of piggyback off your comment about being able to compete still, I feel like with hip hop, and I feel like it's the only genre of music that does this, there is this sort of ageism that goes on. Definitely. Like once you hit like a certain point, all of a sudden people think that you're on this decline, not understanding it's not like a sport where you have to be physically capable. As long as you're mentally sharp right. and you're willing, you can still put out quality music. How does it feel, you know, kind of being, you know, of, you know, I don't want to say old, but of a older age now where, you know, you've seen it all, you've done it all, and you just want people to kind of understand that hip-hop has this, you know, I want to say this life, this long, this longevity to it that supersedes the art form, but it kind of lends itself to the artist as well. Well, first we gotta realize that when you take a step back and you realize how young hip hop truly is. Yeah. But even in that, as it has become, you know, a force and one of the most, you know, biggest genres, selling genres or whatever. The biggest selling at this point. Yeah, the biggest selling. What corporations do and this is where people take their cues from but what corporations do is they cater to the demographic that has the most disposable income right which is you and so that's where it kind of started trending it's like oh we gotta you know attract the younger you know audience because that's that's who has the disposable income and i just look at it like listen it's people my age that still want to hear some good hip hop. Mm-hmm. There's people that's older than me that still want to, but they have really nothing. Where well, they have things to turn to, mm-hmm. you know, but it's not putting out in front like a lot of this other hip hop that's catering to the younger, yeah. younger generation. So, and I, I just that's just a mental shift like that we all like people have to really think about. Because even me, when I first was like, man, this is a young man, gang, a lot, but then I had to really start doing some real thinking about it. And I was like. Okay, now this is starting to make sense why things happen the way they happen. And also, I feel like if you kind of cut an artist's legs from underneath them, once they reach a certain age, you're not getting a lot of good content because you don't start to find yourself as a person until you reach a certain age. I mean, just think, if I was having a discussion the other day, if Jay-Z would have stopped when people said you're old, we wouldn't have got the mature Jay-Z in yeah. the 444 and you know, the new verse off the week album and things, we wouldn't have got that version of Jay-Z if he would have stopped when people said, you should stop because you're old. So so it's, it's just that thing, man. It's like, we got to keep, you know, us older, those that's older than me and people in my bracket, we have to keep pushing and continuing to show, like, you're still valuable yeah. after a certain point. In your career, even if you're not the big star that you were was, yeah, there's still some value, obviously, to what you do um, as you mature and inside of hip hop. Yeah, and I feel like if we're gonna keep this idea alive that hip hop is a culture, we need to respect the people that came before us. Definitely, definitely, um, and and that's and that's the thing of, you know, I think people have a hard time, like you know, if, if it's 21, 22 year old kid, like. Definitely know who came before you. Yeah. And then you can dabble in figuring out who came before them, like who who influenced them. Yeah. But we, we can't just jump down kids' and legs. Yeah. You know, oh, you don't know who, yeah. you know, Melly Mel was. Like, could you not? It's like, bro, they 21. You know what I'm saying? What like, you mean you never heard white lines? <laughs> right. It's like, you got to show them. You got to trace the lineage back. Because some people don't get it. It's yeah. like, yo, okay, this is how you got here. And then this is how you got he, like this came from here, this came from here, this came from here, and that's how that's how I ended up getting into, you know, Kane, they got Kane heavy, and getting into Rock Him heavy is I'm tracing back lineage. It's like, oh Nas, oh everybody say Nas is like the modern day Rock Him. Let me go listen to more Rock Him. Yeah. Cause I was only like, you know, 
six, seven, eight years old when, when a lot of that stuff was coming out. Exactly. So I wasn't listening to it, you know what I mean? So you got to go back and trace the lineage. And I think if cats started tracing the lineage of who influenced them and then who influenced the people that influenced them and so forth and so on, I think that's when you'll start to see more respect for the culture. It's just about tracing the influences at the end of the day. Exactly, exactly. So tell us about the title of the project, RPM. RPM, uh, acronym for Rapper Cool Music, and uh, Focus actually came up with the title. Like, he had the title since 2014. Um, that's when we first had the idea doing this project. And um, he had the title, and he, he was adding it. He wouldn't let it go. I would have probably never named my project RPM, but... And you just said, fine, whatever. I said, yeah, yeah, I said, let's do it. <laughs> like, I mean, it started off as, like, RPM 60. He wanted to do a 60-minute project. And then obviously as times changed, you know, even just from 2014 to now, it's like a 60 minute project. I can get about two and a half projects out of 60 minutes. Right. So as the time changed, you know, when we from when we birthed the idea to when we actually started working on it, I said, let's just do RPM and we just do, let's not put a minute restriction on it. Let's just do what we're going to do. So what else can we expect from this project? I know it's fairly new and you know, Given the climate of hip hop, you're supposed to be working on your your follow up already. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I supposed, I supposed yeah. to have a new album out by uh, yesterday, by, <laughs> yeah, by Christmas. Yeah. Um, nah, for this project, man, um, slow burn, man, just walking. Just uh, I still have some promo vids uh, that I'm gonna put out on 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 our social media pages. Uh, we actually working on a video idea, uh, two video ideas right now. Can you give us you know the, the uh, facts? Uh, well, one is definitely Pray and Pray, which was the same rule. It's fire, by the way. Um, and then we, we try to figure out what the second video is going to be. Um, I may end up doing three videos total, but so we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to figure out some other things. I think, you know, we're going to bring a little, like a little show or something to L.A., maybe to New York, North Carolina. Just, you know, try to figure out a couple things that we can do for the project. And, um, man, I you know, first week sales, all that, man, I don't play, I don't play on that level. You know what I mean? Like, we slow burn over here. So, I can start off with 500 first week. I can end up with 10,000, you know, in six to eight months, whatever. And I'm, I'm cool with it because it's just, I just want to share and get as many people as possible to um, listen to, to what we did and, and hopefully they appreciate it. Brother, we, we definitely appreciate you stopping by. The album is phenomenal and we really, really hope that we get more music from you in the future and also all the things that you're doing with all these artists we're definitely looking forward to seeing that happen as well thank you man and before we before we go i got another thing i'm doing as well i just i gotta make sure I mention plug, it. plug it man definitely um you know for all the cat i know a lot of cats they always when they when they first find out or found out i was managing a lot of people will come and want me to manage them obviously i don't have time to manage a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. so what me and a couple of my friends ended up doing was we created a distribution hub that we basically take in artists labels whichever one and we you know it's kind of like their foot in the door like we help them out get them started you know make sure they their projects whether it's visual or audio mm -hmm. can um, be distributed like it's supposed to and then the kicker is because you can do that anywhere but the kicker is we come in so I'm able to really advise and, and mentor and help provide resources to these artists or these labels mm -hmm. you know so it's it's not management because I don't have the time to be fully you know emerged yeah, it's more like consulting it's consulting I'm, I'm, I'm still giving you some guidance and some mental and advice and, and, and those different things and um so I also have that I just want to make sure I have that. What's the name of it? Common Sense Media Group. Common Sense um, Media Group. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Hit me up if you, you know, want to want to learn more about what Common Sense Media Group is, and you know, you may catch me somewhere in your city DJing as well because I started doing that as well. Man of many talents. Once again, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Rap the Big Pool. Make sure you get his album RPM out now on all digital streaming platforms. I'm Decent. This has been another edition of The Culture Couch. Make sure you follow us on all social media at PopDest. Make sure you visit our website at PopDest.com. Subscribe to our YouTube and make sure you click the little bell at the top to get notifications of brand new content going up. And we will see you soon. Peace.